Hello, and welcome to Matthias's Rust Corner. Today, we're talking about tools, tips, and tricks for testing asynchronous Rust code. The easiest and most straightforward way to test your async code is to simply use an async executor, such as Tokyo, async, std, or small to run our tests. This is usually what you want if you're simply writing async code using async await syntax and want to write a small test for it. In this example, we used the Tokyo test macro rather than the standard hashtag test we're used to. We can then write our test function as an async function, and we simply await our future under test using the await keyword. Async std also has a similar test macro we can use. You can also use the block on function from, for instance, async std or futures to simply block the test thread and drive the future from there. Sometimes your code will have some form of dependency on time. Typically, this will be things like tick timers or pullback algorithms. Testing functionality with such explicit delays could get very slow. Luckily, Tokyo lets us pause time, which essentially means fast forwarding all futures related to time, such as sleep, tick, etc. The example on the screen, which is from their unit testing tutorial, link below, shows how the sleep future delays 0 milliseconds instead of the 500 you would expect. One important detail of this time manipulation is that futures resolve in the order they would complete, even though they all consume no time. Another property is that time-related futures are only short-circuited if it's the only future that may complete. So if you have a loop with select over a tick as well as another future, as we see here, the sleep will not be fast-forwarded, since doing so may interfere with the logic of our loop. We may have cases where we wish to interact with the future under test from our test code. We can simply spawn a Tokyo task from the test and provide input asynchronously as required. Here's an example of feeding numbers into the sum async function we are testing from a task using a channel. We can essentially make a small driver task that codify the async interactions we wish to test and verify. Sometimes though, you want to test your future implementation directly. To do this, we will have to manually poll. Let's say we have this dummy future, which should resolve after being polled exactly three times. In theory, this is as simple as calling the poll method on an instance of the struct three times, but there's a small catch. The poll method requires a core task context, which in turn requires a waker to construct. Luckily, the future scrape provides us with a no-op waker which, as the name suggests, does nothing. Since we are manually controlling when our futures are polled, this is perfectly fine for the test scenario. Now we can simply call the poll method on our future and make the assertions about its invariance along the way. As a quick side note, in this test code, we're using the poll and pin method provided by the futures ext trait. This lets us avoid pinning our future as long as the type of the future is unpin. Being unpinned means that there are no self-referential pointers inside of the future struct, which would have to be updated if it moved in memory. If our future type is not unpinned, we instead have to call the poll method directly on a pinned reference to our future. The exact same approach can of course be used with streams as well. Notice in this example how we use the poll next unpin in much the same way as we did with the regular future. If you're running your tests in the browser using the Vasm Bindgen test runner, you will want to avoid using the blocking approach from above, since it would stall the single threaded runtime, and you cannot use Tokyo. Instead, we use the Vasm Bindgen test macro to execute async tests. Additionally, we can use the spawn local function to spawn async tasks in the browser. Again, this is because we cannot use Tokyo. I have provided a link to the testing chapter of my Dominator book in the description below. That's it for this quick overview of testing async code. Make sure to share the video if you find it useful, and don't forget to like and subscribe. Thanks for watching. Goodbye!